text eval print loop. Um, it's a interactive interpreter, which is a play on REPL, which is a standard tool computer scientist. So it takes your code, um, evals it, prints it, and then gives it back to you. Um, but the difference here is that instead of printing it, instead of a uh, typing it in your computer, you text it, um, and then it texts it back to you. So it's completely computerless, don't need it in the internet, don't need any software set up, you just text it and you're good to go. It was a challenge for the most ridiculous use of a text API, um, and I couldn't think of any more ridiculous things to do with text than programming with it. When you send a text to my number, it will send a request to my server, which I will start. So the server is written in Node.js, so I'm going to start the server with Node.js main two. So that's now started and that's now listening for requests. So when you send a post request to that server, it will go about interpreting it as a text. So I'm a new user. I haven't got an account set up. So I text it hello just to give it a knock on the door to let it know I'm there. So that text has gone off to the text services server, which then takes the text and does a post request to it to my server. So that text has gone through and it's picked me up as a user. So the server has replied, please send environment choice and border persistence. That's asking me to set up my environment. So I'm going to set up my environment as a Haskell environment. So I'm going to do Haskell and false. It has to all be in lowercase. Haskell sets the Haskell interpreter, so it will be compiling Haskell code. And false uh, means I'm working in a single line environment. Um, you can work in, like off of a file, so you can build up variables and work in multiple lines and do more complex things. But in this case, we'll go for something simple. So that's now been accepted. Um, so I'm now set up as a user, so I've got setup accepted, come at me bro, because my server's a bit antagonistic. So I can now text it code. So for example, I can use it as a calculator, because that's a practical use for it, why not? So I can text it one plus one, because I really want to wait to find out what one plus one is. Oh, that went really quick. Hasn't sent me any craft, just sent me the result of what I wanted. So if I do it something more complex, if I now text it map plus one from zero to 20, which is taking me a long time, it's not a practical way to program. For every element in that list, it will add one to it, and then it will return me the result of that, which should be 21 things, all with one added to them. So there we go, that's gone in, and it's got the, as you can see, it's got my input here and the output here. So that has text me the result of that file, which also has my previous result in it for some reason. So yeah, there we go, I've got the list of results. So I asked for a list of zero to 20, um, so that should give me 21 things, and then I've added one to each one of them. So it starts from one and goes up to 21. If you've got a language that can be interpreted, so for example, Python or Haskell or Ruby, um, you can run an interactive interpreter. So that will be the Python command, um, the GHCI command, the Ruby command. And then in that, you get a single line environment where you can type in a piece of code um, and the interpreter will evaluate it and print out the result. What this does is takes text from a text and feeds that into an interpreter and then text back the result. So it's using the standard interpreters that you use on your computer if you develop this way every day, um, but it's just wrapping them in a text API, um, which yeah allows you to set, use them by text. Um, so you could actually use this for any command line thing, like for example, CalSay. So CalSay is a fun little Unix program where you give it a string and it draws a cow in ASCII saying that string, and you can use it for stuff like that. You could use it for any command line arguments. So I suppose there's going to be other uses for this system than what we've used it for so far, um, which is a bit disappointing because, again, it's meant to be useless. It was originally made to be completely ludicrous, but unfortunately, it's actually ended up being somewhat useful, and I'm blaming that on the reason that this didn't win. Um, I've cut, like, for example, a use case of, of it is if you're a lecturer and you're teaching a Haskell class, um, you could put this number up and you can use it for some classroom interaction. Or a use that I'm actually genuinely using it for now is if you're out and about and um, you, you've been thinking about something all day, you've been, got some bit of code that's troubling you and you finally think of something that, oh, this might work, you can evaluate it straight away and have a go at it. Um, so it has, does actually have some valid use cases. It's a bit of a shame that I've only got limited credit on the text system or I would use it forever. but. Yeah, so it's not as ridiculous as it at first seemed. Um, I'm currently also building some other languages into it. So Python, Ruby, and Perl do work, but they're disabled at the moment because they're unsafe and will nuke everything. So we've got our tweet here. All the chocolate bars are available, but not as nice. Daniel purchased a 50p confectionery. <laughs> so actually, it is actually generic. It is very generic.